Hello, welcome back to the shrine. I got a bunch of these little parts that I need to hold in the lathe, making kind of cereal production. And uh, my lathe chuck is not really precise. This 10 microns to a division, so I've got about 0.2 millimeters of runout. Obviously the three jaw scroll chucks are not the most precise instruments in the world, but 8 thou or 0.2 millimeters is still a lot. I also have a four jaw chuck. The problem is that I can true any part in this within one thou, but it takes forever. So I decided to go and purchase a collet chuck. This is a Bolstar, that is the brand. I've seen good reviews of this on YouTube and I thought, you know, this is gonna be something that serves me well. This is a typical 5C collet, so you insert it in there, there's a thread inside, you thread this thing in, and then once you tighten the thread with the scroll, there's a scroll inside, once you tighten it, it will pull this together and you should be able to get good repeatable results with this chuck. Now there are a lot of old chucks on the market. They are made by Jacobs and they range between $300 and $600 depending if you use a 5C collet chuck or if you are using a rubber flex. So this is the 5C collet and then this is the rubber flex collet. When I purchased this chuck, it came with a backing plate and the backing plate is in a half ready state. They call it semi-machined. But anyways, the idea is that the backing plate is gonna adapt to the spindle nose on the lathe and then the front side of the plate is unfinished so you gotta mount it on a lathe and then finish it and that will provide a true uh, register diameter on which later this can be attached so that would provide the minimum amount of runout for this chuck to begin with so the problem I run into is that when I put the backing plate together with the cam lock studs and I was trying to install it on the spindle nose it just wasn't sitting properly. So check this out this is the three jaw chuck I'm gonna install it and watch this when I push it in you see it completely enters in and then the gap here between the spindle nose and the chuck disappears. So even if I tighten just one of the cam locks it will completely pull this on. Here is the 80 pound four jaw chuck. Same thing when I install it it will completely clear the gap here. The two surfaces will lay on each other. So this is the new backing plate. I installed the studs. I didn't install these bolts. I just installed the studs to a certain depth. So they should clear the bottom of the bore. And watch what happens. When I install this, you see it's, it's crooked. It's absolutely crooked. And I'm trying to push it in and it's not going anywhere. And I can clog this as long as I want but it's not it's not popping on you see that one corner is always off now I try to tighten the cam lock studs and then it pulls it in but it's just it's just not cool you see that I can clock this into any position it always gonna have this crescent shaped gap and I cannot push this on now if I remove the studs, you see, it's going to lay nice and flat and there's no gap. I was trying to check the gap with a filler gauge 
and I couldn't find any even with a four thou that's the thinnest filler gauge and I was just pushing this on with my hand so I started to investigate why is it um, sitting crooked on and I came to the realization that these threads and the holes might be the culprit. I installed the studs and completely tightened them against the shoulder so that the shoulder of the of the stud is uh, compressing against the countersink, the surface of the countersink and the plate. May I introduce you to my smallest machine square? She's cute. This is about two inch by three inch and she's accurate. If we look against the big one, you can see it's dead knots on. So let's see if these studs are perpendicular to the base. I ended up measuring the gaps with a filler gauge like so, always on the side that's leaning away you know on the top and this is what I got so the accuracy range is from less than 4 thou to more than 40 thou that's how much these are leaning so that's always at the top and the height the height of the stud is about 40 millimeters but it's all over the place as you can see it's not even consistent what I'm going to do is essentially move these holes to the other side so I'm gonna drill new holes on this side and then tap the holes and create the countersink so now I can sweep that you can see that it's parallel to the axis I added a bolt here this is an M8 and it doesn't have knurling on it so it just has a smooth surface with a spacer so it's sticking out what I want to do is to find the center of this M8 um, threaded hole and watch you see I went in and I swept that with the indicator and you can see that the the needle is absolutely stable so it's within 10 microns so right now we are on the center of this hole this is really important finding this center so watch this so this is my X or lateral travel in this direction left to right so look at that so this is 25 microns relative to the center of the hole so the, the threaded hole is 25 microns re relative to the center of the hole that gives me great confidence that I'm right on money and then this one shows the radius 6631 this is a drawing I made based on the D16 cam layout and the spec in the book specifies 66675 and we just measured 6631 so the center of this hole is three tenths of a millimeter off relative to the standard on that cam plate it's also standing crooked so that's why I have hard time installing it so now that I know how this is laid out I can put this in a CAD and then I can come up with the center points of these new holes on the other side on the other side of the M8 screw so I can figure out where these center holes are relative to the coordinate system and I can come in and drill the new holes this is the old drawing and uh, it's got this 133-35 pitch diameter for the bolt circle 
So 13335 corresponds to 5.25 inches. That's the standard for the 1-6 cam lock. And um, I went back and I measured across the pins and the, the size of the cam lock pins for my 4-jaw chuck, for my 3-jaw chuck, and for my spindle. And so that this is the result, the measurement across the pins, and then these are the pin sizes. And so then I did some math and calculated what the pole pitch circle diameter would be. So you can see on a 4-jaw and a 3-jaw, it's got a wide range. It's uh, because, um, you know, those pins are loose, but when I did the measurement on the spindle nose, it was pretty consistent. So 133, 48, 49, 51, you know, that's a good measurement. So anyways, it's supposed to be 133, 35, so it's a little, bit, a little bit higher than the nominal. So accordingly, I made a new print and uh, here's, here's the new print. So this print basically has the retention bolt hole as a center, you know, just as I set it up in the, uh, in the mill. And then everything is relative to that so that it, it would be like a mirror image. So the old, the old hole is on this side and then it's a mirror image, so the new hole's gonna be on the on the opposite side. So these are the coordinates, you know, for the new holes. So I'm gonna go and uh, drill the holes. It's so satisfying when something is complete. You know, I call this backing plate light weighing, which it really is. It's, it, it's light weighing the backing plate. This is first test, I promise. So I'm just gonna put these in randomly and then do an installation, see if it fits or if it fits not. I gotta tell you that M16 Tap did a wonderful job cutting these threads. It had no problem whatsoever cutting that material. So I just need to align these and make sure that they properly aligned towards that hole. And then this is moment of truth. <laughs> Look at that. See, I just put this on. And I can go and clock it and put it in a different clocking position. When something is done right, then it's gonna work. Look at that, there's no gap. And it has a perfect contact. <laughs> Watch this. 
see I assemble it and I'm trying to lock the screws and they are not locking so I try another one that's not gonna lock what could be the problem <laughs> you might ask <laughs> Oh, check this out. You see the lock? So this is the locking cam and it's on this side of the screw. But the notch on the screw is on the other side. <laughs> so when I rotated the screw, when I switch it from this position here and then rotated it 180, then the spindle nose wants to have the notch, this notch, to be right here on this side. <laughs> so I need to rotate these and add the locking hole on that side right here. So let's go and do some more light, light weighing for, for the assembly. <laughs> oh, it feels so dumb. I didn't see that coming three hours later. Don't ask me why it takes three hours to drill six holes. It's really setting up, you know, making sure that it's straight and then finding the center, finding the coordinates, and then basically drilling, then doing the counter bore, then doing two counter sinks for the small hole, the big hole, and then tapping. Also, I've been just standing here and admiring it. And I also stone the back surface because when I do the countersinking here, it will raise a burr. And eventually, this back surface is going to rest against the spindle nose. So it has to be flat. So, what I did is I just stoned. You know, when you're stoning it, you can feel. If there is an edge and then the stone is going to remove that, you're going to make sure that it's laying flat on the surface. You can see when I install the locking bolt, you see it doesn't go in unless the stud is in a proper angular position. So essentially the head of this locking bolt is going to make sure that the stud is in a certain angular position so when it will meet the cam you know it will it will be able to lock into the spindle nose let's do a test shall we I was gonna align the numbers here and here I might go later and stamp the numbers in so it snaps in I had to adjust the studs relative to what I had on the three jaw chuck that came with the lathe, they had to come out because those studs, the, the, the relief, this relief is in a slightly different position, it's inward. So now these are sticking out for one more thread. So let's go and lock it. When you lock the cam, there are two marks here, so one is pointing to the right and one is pointing down. So this mark has to be between those two. So the cams had to be aligned or adjusted in such a way that when you lock the cams, this is going to be right in the middle. So that one is good. That one is good. This is good. You don't have to wring water out of it. I got a gauge here. The smallest one is uh, one and a half thou. So I'm just gonna go and see if it shimmies in. If it slides in anywhere here. But it looks like it's not, it's not going in. Tried to buy some Prussian blue in the stores but nobody carries it anymore you can order it but I guess nobody's doing a valve job anymore so I resorted to my daughter's oil color 
this is uh, sky blue hopefully that will do the job I got some smeared on the spindle nose I just want to see what the imprint is I'm going to match up the numbers so one goes to hole number one insert it like so and remove it and you can see it's got a nice uniform imprint on the lower section and here is the collet chuck and this is the back side it's got this uh, bore inside and I did a quick measurement 94.99 so let's say 95 millimeters and then I also did a measurement on the backing plate on this pilot diameter it's 97.65 so the idea is that this comes half finished and you're supposed to turn this diameter here and make sure that this matches that I did a skim cut to this diameter here and then I came in with a indicator and then set it to zero and basically did a run out test and you can see it's absolutely stable then I went ahead removed the uh, backing plate and then I you know cleaned it again reinstalled it and that's what you see now so first of all the indicator went back to the zero position so that's always good and as you can see when I'm turning it it stays stable so it's repeatable I can remove this and then put it back on and it's repeatable now I need to do the same thing on the face here so machine this face skim off a little bit of that so that the chuck is gonna sit uh, flat on that surface These are sanding belts for a small little handheld sander and they are real convenient when you need to send something on the lathe. Put this plate here so then later on I can vacuum the grit off of it, clean the ways. But um, this is a real nice way to step by step get the size that you actually want. So I got 180 grit and I have 220 grit and I kept measuring and basically chamfering that um, and just uh, working at it but here's the chuck so let's do a test fit you can see it's a nice it's a nice fit here's another view So it's a nice fit. There's no play. And I'm, I'm going at it hard. It's just this lip, this register diameter, I'd say it's five millimeter wide. You can see it's a real nice fit. So there's there's no play. Time to bolt this bad boy on. Now I wouldn't be surprised if that bolt head Look at that, even the bolt doesn't go in. Okay, well, let's investigate what's going on. 
but it wouldn't surprise me if the, this bolt is crooked. I mean, look at that. Just look at that. Look, the bolt is completely crooked. This thing just doesn't end. It just doesn't end. I mean, you got one eight right there. So this might be 40 millimeters long and you have one eight here. Look at that. You see two, three millimeters of clearance. This bolt is completely crooked this way. I just, I just can't believe this. I should have, I should have sent this back first day. But then you gotta spend two or three hours just to inspect it and then deal with the seller. I'm gonna have the worst ever comment on this item. I mean, here's this video proving that this is like the, the worst ever, you know, backing flange that came out of China. I mean, that is just crazy. That thread is completely drilled in a, like a five degree oblique angle. <laughs> that was drilled by a blind apprentice with a, a dull drill. <laughs> Just like that, three new holes are pierced. <laughs> a little over pierced. <laughs> I didn't have a bottoming tap, so I had to drill the hole deeper. That kind of helped. This is not really a uh, the surface, the mating surface. The mating surface ends about halfway. That's how long the, the spindle nose taper is. It's not nice, but it will work. So, that goes on here. Let's see if there's a gap anywhere. That would indicate that it's not seated properly. So again, this is the one and a half thou. Doesn't go in here. Doesn't really go in anywhere. It is amazing, you know, when you drill a perpendicular hole, it will most of the times work first time. Let's do some indicating, shall we? I got the chuck mounted properly. So look at that. That's a 10 micron indicator. So 10 microns is less than half a thou, and that needle is absolutely stable. It's not going anywhere. Got a half an inch collet installed. This is just a half an inch end mill. I'm using the cylindrical part to indicate on. And you can see the needle moves a little bit. That's about 10 microns, so half a thou. I think that should be a satisfactory result for all the 14 hours of work I've been doing to get this backing plate work with my lathe and my newly acquired chuck. The backing plate came in this plastic Ziploc bag. All it says back plate D16 made in China. I don't have the box anymore for the boss star chuck, I probably pitched it. And with all that, this will be a wrap. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, please do so. And if you really like the channel, one way you can help me is you share my videos. Thank you and see you on the next one. Bye.